2020 COVID-19 global pandemic is a tragedy that will define a decade. What does this mean for martial arts coaching and training? And what does this mean for self-protection on the whole? My name is Jamie Club from Club Carmira Martial Arts, and this is our first lockdown vlog. Well, at the risk of not bringing anything new to the table, it's worth stating that the new reality is online training. Whether you are pre-recording material to offer as lessons to your classes, or whether you're engaging in one-to-one -one video training, as I am via Skype or Zoom, this is our new reality. This is the new Kroon uh, dojo, dojang, gym, or whatever you decide to name your place of martial arts training. With that in mind, uh, we are going to see a lot of uh, different developments uh, along the way. We will see advances in technology, in the way that people train. We will see uh, certain methods uh, fall by the wayside, as is the nature of evolution by natural selection. And we will see the development of martial arts building in increasing amounts of solo training. There's certainly a strong degree of smugness out there presented by our brothers and sisters in the traditional martial arts world. I'm not going to say it's not justified. Yes, you guys have katas, you have patterns, you have pooms, you have various different methods for solo training that is carefully choreographed and recorded and that was the basis of your art and you make a good argument by saying circumstances like this are exactly why these things were created in the first place. And yeah, well done you guys. But you don't have ownership on it, so I think uh, the rest of the martial arts world don't, doesn't need to be, feel too bad about this. Uh, certainly the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world, which is known for its contact training and for its emphasis on sparring and drilling, uh, these guys have had solo training drills from as far back as I can remember. In fact, it was one of the uh, good parts of their warm-ups uh, that I took to heart and I uh, incorporated into my mixed martial arts coaching and my self-protection coaching. The, uh, the calisthenics they do uh, uh, mimic techniques um, and they're just a, just a great way for building muscle memory, a great way for uh, replicating techniques uh, when you haven't got a training partner and a great way to warm up. And uh, I've always made that a big part of my uh, seminars, my workshops, and it's in my writings as well. You'll see it in my 2014 uh, Mordor's Victory and Other Martial Mutterings, uh, as well as uh, the video I did towards the end of 2019 about solo training. So I've always been very pro the concept of solo training as a method for warming up, as a method for recording information and data, as we have seen in catters and pooms, etc., and as a way to uh, keep, uh, keep sharp in between lessons, in between formal lessons and in between times when you can't train with other people. We have records of shadow training right back to antiquity. Pancreationists did it. Uh, shadow boxers in uh, Western boxing and Muay Thai have developed some very sophisticated ways to improve on your solo training. I learned a lot from Tommy Thompson when I learned Western boxing via his TVP method and also uh, in the short time I trained under Tom at uh, Motique's gym in Weymouth. Uh, Tom sadly is no longer with us but he made exactly the same points that uh, Tommy Thompson made to me regarding shadow boxing and that visualization is very very important. So we have different types of shadow boxing and I will, I will address that but the visualization is the one that we want to be aiming towards. Which then brings us on to the downside of solo training. Training on your own is still not the same as training with a partner. It is not better than training with a partner unless your purpose is to be very, very good at performing a solo uh, performance. Uh, I have been a, perform a performer, a martial arts performer. I've performed in front of audiences for the aesthetic of the art to put on a show. So, uh, I mean, that part of it's great. Uh, if you're doing a, a, a musical form, if you're doing a solo kata, and the, the end all of that is to produce a, an aesthetically pleasing kata or form, then great, then yes, solo training, you are training exactly as you would train. However, if your emphasis is something more based on fighting, it's based on uh, either competition-based fighting or whether it's a self-defense perspective, solo training is not a replacement for partner training. A lot of you will know that, but as time goes on, the Calypso effect uh, can be quite powerful. We have to consider the effects of prolonged periods of solo training. 
consider what happens when you just work a bag. When you just work a heavy bag, you start finding uh, new ways to work the bag. You will naturally adapt to working the bag to the point where you are just working the heavy bag. You're not working the heavy bag to be better in your sparring, to be better in a self-defense situation. Uh, or even to develop power into your strikes. Or at least if you're developing power into your strikes, you'll be developing uh, power that is uh, not applicable, that uh, power that you won't be able to transfer into a combative situation. Likewise, when you do your shadow training, you'll be needing to make um, a good number of concessions, depending on where you do the solo training or the actual solo training itself, the, sh the shadow boxing that you're doing, you'll need to make certain concessions. You can't hit the air hard, you'll damage your joints. Uh, we, we, so we'll move, we still move um, differently when we do uh, shadow training. We try to make it as relevant as possible, but these things are going to happen. And we have to think about what those long-term ramifications will be. So again, this is where the critical thinking really comes in. Even on the technology front, I'm starting to see some uh, aids that are coming out at the moment that can help you mimic the techniques that you've been training uh, using resistance bands. Uh, this, this equipment needs to be used very mindfully. Uh, it can really screw up the mechanics of your training uh, if it's done wrong. Uh, if it's done correctly, it can, it can enhance your training. And uh, there's some great stuff out there, but uh, expect to see more people punching with weights and increasing uh, uh, resistance of the weights, which will then also lead to the detriment of certain techniques. Uh, but people are going to be getting you know, great workouts as far as they're concerned. They're going to feel stronger, their muscles will get bigger, uh, they, maybe their cardio will, will improve through using some of this, uh, this equipment. But their techniques, uh, their, skill, their skill levels won't necessarily improve from a combative perspective. So we need to be mindful of all this kind of stuff. We need to be critical of it, uh, what technologies we're using and uh, what, what new ideas we're, we're creating to stave off the boredom of regular training on our own um, in front of a, a computer screen. Uh, this then brings us on to self-protection. So when I look at it from a self-protection point of view, there are there are various different topics that we can discuss, and I, I'm not going to try and cover them all now. Uh, one thing's for sure is that we're going to sadly see uh, a rise in violence um, in the homes, and uh, that those of you that are involved with homeschooling um, might start nodding your heads a bit too enthusiastically over this one. No, no, no joking matter. Domestic violence um, has increased threefold. Uh, it's, uh, it's a part of uh, self-protection uh, education that we don't take seriously enough. Uh, most self-protection instructors, as we all know, would rather be preparing you to fight the monster that jumps from the shadows, the stranger, rather than the more likely threats uh, that you would encounter in, in real life. So, uh, you know, we need to be mindful of that. Um, uh, more crimes within our actual local neighbourhood might even come out of this. Then there'll be all the issues with regards to uh, perceived shortages of uh, supplies. There's, there's a lot of stuff coming into that. I'm not foreseeing zombie apocalypse things happening. Uh, and this then brings us on to how we look at the whole COVID-19 uh, situation, the, uh, the reaction of different people and uh, how we can use use that as a self-protection lesson. People's reactions to the pandemic. We are seeing hypervigilance at one end and we are seeing uh, switched off denial and unawareness at the other end. And then we're seeing plenty of sensible people dwelling in the rather vast gray area in between. A threat uh, needs to be responded to proportionately. If it's not responded to uh, within the right level of proportion, then it can create other problems. Uh, if you go into denial, which uh, I'm seeing is the is generally what we are we are seeing a lot of the problems being uh, people flouting the uh, recommendations made by mainstream scientific opinion, and that's what I believe we should be listening to, um, which should inform our normal martial arts training, our self protection training, anyway, our health, well being, and therefore something like this. The people we want to be listening to are people who are experts on disease, are experts on pandemics, um, and the collective. Uh, good people um, th that represent that. Uh, let's not get into government things. Um, don't let uh, politics get in the way. I'm seeing way too much politicking. People can't resist it. They're very opportunistic in that point of view. Yes, there are certain issues that uh, need to be debated and certain things that have um, uh, subjective opinion can take you one way or the other. But as far as the mainstream scientific consensus is concerned, that is the guidance we need to be looking at. 
So, uh, which as I said again, it's it's the sort of thing that goes across all my training and teaching. Uh, critical thinking is really, really important. Uh, so we are seeing, but we're seeing a lot of denial. We're seeing people who um, are, because they can't see it, uh, because they don't think they're at risk, or if they are at risk, they don't care, but they don't realize the long-term ramifications of this. They don't learn, they don't understand um, even the short-term ramifications. Uh, you know, even if uh, you never get COVID-19, um, even if you don't, uh, no one who's close to you gets COVID-19, imagine that kind of situation. It doesn't matter if you're going into a hospital and that hospital is uh, being exhausted by the COVID-19 outbreak, by patients of the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, so, you know, if you've got a nine-year-old who has an asthma attack and now can't access a ventilator because they're all being used by COVID-19 patients, well then, you know, that's, you know, that's a situation uh, you could face. So endorsing and pushing uh, what the uh, mainstream medical uh, opinion, what the mainstream medical guidelines are telling us, the mainstream scientific guidance are telling us um, is a good thing. And that's, you know, that's our proportionate response, washing our hands, self-isolating, practicing social distancing, all these wonderful new terms and phrases that have uh, suddenly entered our vocabulary in 2020. And as I said, will be part of defining uh, our, the, the decade that, that we face. Uh, then, of course, you've got the hypervigilance end of the scale. Now, these are the guys who uh, ridiculously stockpile. They they go out and um, they, they don't show um, any concern for their fellow um, neighbour. They don't they um, they buy in ridiculous amounts of um of, of products, um, you know, we've seen it all at the early stages with all this uh, mass buying of, uh, of toilet tissue, which is um, <laughs> um, I, I can't believe that that's come to define so much of us here. Uh, and again, again, that's a type of hyper vigilance that we're starting to that we are that we are seeing all the time. So that's at that end of the scale. So in the self protection world, uh, we would see it. That's from people who are switched off and daydreaming at one end to people who are paranoid at the other end. And of course, the people who are paranoid as well, the ones that also feed in all the conspiracy theories. They speak. They feed in all the pseudoscience. Uh, they're, they're scrambling for anything that's going to give them some form of certainty or reassurance, even if it's a negative uh, reassurance and certainty. And again, we see that in the martial arts world. We see people. Um, uh, we see traditionalists. Uh, um, sometimes pushing uh, myths and fables and uh, false preconceptions about where their arts come from and therefore that has a direct relevance on the efficiency of how their art is being taught. If they believe that so-and-so did this and uh, then they believe that uh, we can learn how to do this and therefore it is effective. Uh, and, uh, and again, they have their conspiracy theories as well within their martial arts, not just about the death of Bruce Lee, but various different traditional martial arts have this uh, preconception about uh, how uh, information is being suppressed on on secret training methods and uh, if we all knew about them uh, then we could be deadly so the same thing is what you just you see what you see with the covid-19 conspiracy theories where people start telling you about it being a man made disease people start telling you about uh, how it's uh, all, all a, um, a plan by the russians and the chinese and all this sort of thing and that this just distorts information this dis creates unnecessary worry and concern and also uh, makes people less trustful of people who they need to be more trustful of which as i said is the uh, mainstream scientific community uh, you know uh, scientists yes can be bribed scientists can be corrupted scientists can be intimidated but science can't be okay? so science as a whole can't be uh, and, that, and that's the important thing you know if you're seeing across the world mainstream scientists um, endorsing a certain uh, principle then really that's what you need to be taking uh, your information from not bob down the internet who decides that uh, 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 that, that this new conspiracy is a lot more convincing so that's you know th these things are distractions these things are, are the paranoia you're not being a critical thinker here you're practicing what we call uh, not only uh, pseudo science in some cases and pseudo history but you're actually pr um, practicing pseudo skepticism so we need to be wary of, wary of that end of it um, so in the middle we've got the proportionate responses and and what we've seen is a, a ranking up of um, of awareness you know awareness levels have um, been been raised accordingly and this is what happens so if we look at the microcosm of a self-defense situation you're faced with a confirmed threat you're faced with something that uh, could cause you severe harm or even death 
Um, we imagine in a, in a self-defense situation that is a single human being or a group of human beings uh, who have decided to target you or target someone um, who care about someone who you wish to protect. You um, try to use your soft skills training, whether it's avoidance, whether it's uh, getting to an exit point, uh, any number of things that could be done to avoid the conflict, avoid putting yourself at further risk in dealing with that. So that's like, you know, in many ways with the COVID-19, we're not, uh, we, we, we didn't leave our place of work immediately. Um, you know, there's a lot of debate about when we, you know, when the, the quarantine should have started, when the self-isolation should have started. Uh, you know, but again, we're all responding to the information as it's given to us, as the information becomes more confirmed. So in that kind of situation, OK, let's say it deteriorates into a, a fight. With, you know, we're back to now our self-defense situation. That deteriorates into a fight situation. And you might look back on it retrospectively thinking, what was I doing wasting my time trying to talk my way out of that situation when really I should have preempted that person and got, got, got um, out of it quickly? You know, if I'd f acted faster physically, I might have... Uh, you know, save myself uh, a lot of these injuries or a lot of other things, you know, might not have happened. So uh, th th that then goes to the COVID-19 situation. As more information starts arriving, as we uh, get more information confirmed, we then respond to that appropriately. And the moment we're at the stage when we're practicing a lot of social distancing um, in the UK and we are self-isolating. Uh, and that is the proportionate response. So we're not going into denial, but we're not going into hypervigilance. So that, I think, is you know, the self-defense lesson. That's the self-protection lesson that we can take away from this kind of situation. Uh, I'll be back uh, with a vlog on uh, various other things that uh, has relevance to our situation at the moment. Uh, I don't see it going away uh, too soon at the moment. I don't like to date my uh, material. I like my material to be as accessible and relevant as possible for future users. However, Another thing that shapes the COVID-19 lockdown situation, the COVID-19 global pandemic situation, is the constant changing of information and situations. We are constantly having to adapt. And again, as a principle for martial artists and self-protection uh, students, uh, this is very, very important. Uh, the importance of adaption, the importance of adapting to different situations. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, in summary, uh, please uh, be critical in your thinking, uh, be critical in your martial arts training, uh, um, Be uh, go easy on uh, the sports uh, people and go easy on the self-defense people who are doing their best to produce uh, solo work. Um, some of them are learning the benefits of uh, traditional martial arts training. Uh, some of them always have endorsed um, the, those methods. Um, some of them have always endorsed their own solo training and shadow training methods and the argument for that uh, it, it does remind me uh, uh, to a time in the 1990s where uh, traditional martial artists who emphasized strike-based uh, techniques were getting criticized by the sports world from by the uh, mixed martial arts uh, rising culture and uh, some members of the reality based self-defense culture for the inclusion of grappling techniques uh, and uh, the statement that these grappling techniques had always been part of their systems. Well, I think uh, the evidence has well and truly stood up to the fact that uh, certain martial arts systems such as karate and related other systems from that and many uh, Chinese martial arts systems and many different martial arts systems over the world that have traditionally been taught through most of the 20th century as being just about uh, striking and blocking uh, do have grappling applications. The likes of Gavin Mulholland and Ian Abernethy have done a great job in proving that uh, the evidence is there so they have proven that uh, even though uh, the argument put against uh, the l a large number of traditional strike based martial arts was valid. Uh, they didn't have uh, grappling applications. They weren't teaching them. Their interpretations of their katas and forms uh, didn't have those grappling sides of it. Likewise, uh, it's uh, we, the, the evidence is there that uh, martial arts that don't have prearranged forms, that don't have uh, katas, that don't have uh, solo work that is choreographed and recorded, um, still do have methods for solo training and always have had methods for solo training. And there are a lot of great uh, teachers that have endorsed and supported this part of it. Uh, um, so, you know, uh, it's, it's the same thing. 
uh, it's a similar argument, shall we say. So, yeah, a good number of, uh, of, of grapplers have been very, very critical of solo training methods and, uh, and others that just haven't, haven't endorsed it. Fair enough, they, they, uh, they deserve the satire, they deserve the criticism that they're getting from the traditionists, just as the good number of traditionists or quasi-traditionists deserve the criticism for suddenly adding in grappling methods and ground fighting techniques when they never did teach it within their particular school. Uh, but likewise, be mindful of uh, the large number of uh, of people in uh, the just in, in the traditional martial arts world that uh, always did endorse uh, grappling methods and groundwork and always uh, and and have a, a valid lineage to that. But likewise, people in the sports world, in the self protection world, uh, uh, have long had solo training methods as well, and some very very good ones. Uh, if we if we get into the sort of the closed mind of um, we're the only ones who've been doing this and anyone else is just trying to jump on the bandwagon because of certain circumstances that have been presented. We can blink ourselves to a lot of information that's out of there. Um, yeah, we want to be supportive as best we can. Criticism where it's due, um, satire where it's due, but uh, let's also be overall supportive and uh, work as a community. Uh, personally, I hope to be producing a large amount of content that uh, should be useful for you uh, during the lockdown and beyond. Uh, so this is a great time to be creative and to create uh, plenty of uh, new videos, uh, podcasts, written material. Uh, this is really what I'm looking forward to. Uh, I hope to be running uh, an online uh, seminar. Um, let's... Um, Next, look forward to that. Um, any suggestions, please put them towards me, but I think it's going to be on the value of solo training, the value of training in confined spaces and so on. It would be great just to run that through something like Zoom. Um, and uh, I hope to be doing some uh, live uh, live uh, chats, live feeds through uh, through Facebook as well. Uh, yeah, new podcast episodes um, on the horizon. I've got stuff uh, written up and things I want to record and uh, maybe some recorded versions of some of my written work as well. Uh, that uh, that'll be great. I'm looking forward to doing that um, as I balance um, the uh, the pressure of homeschooling and uh, also helping out with my parents too. So um, look forward to hearing from you soon and uh, keep safe and uh, as best you can. Please keep in. Thank you.